right. Thank God that uh, we have another time, another day to come together in worship, come together in prayers, come together in the study of the Word, and to receive ministration from the Holy Spirit. All right, today we're moving over to Lesson 4 um, in our Sunday School Outline. On the school manual lesson four and the title of this lesson is it is by his mercies it is by his mercies it is by his mercies see that's a that title is a sort of a statement right it's a statement it is by his mercies and then you i guess we we have to Anybody can make a statement, but uh, is the statement true? Is the statement false? Is there any uh, facts behind the statement? You know, is there any proof behind the statement? All right, so when our lesson outline says today, it is by his mercies. And you and I have often said that. We've, we've said that phrase and say, oh, it is by the mercies of the Lord. Even when we pray this morning, we said again, it is by the mercies. It is, if not for his mercies, we would not be here. We say that all the time. So I, I pray that as we look through um, our outline this morning, um, you know, we, we get to uncover if there's any basis to this statement that we often say as believers. And then if there is indeed a, you know, a tangible proof to the statement, you know, what does it mean for us? How do we respond to that statement? Uh, what impact should the statement it is by his mercies what should it have on our lives amen hallelujah so everyone here uh and those online good morning to you as well um so you've have you ever made that statement just show by a raise of hands have you ever said that uh it is by god's mercies have you ever said that okay some people have never said that okay <laughs> is there anyone who has never said that Show your hands. Have you ever said that it is by God's mercies? Ah, and Sister Ori, you've never said that. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to make sure. Because I know it's, uh, it's one of the, you know, more common Christian lingua, right? It's one of those things that we say in, in, in Christianity. Ah, uh, na godu, you know, let me speak some pages. Ah, uh, na godu. Ah, uh, if not be godu, you know, we say things like that. Uh, all right. Amen. All right, so our lesson text today, uh, it's from the book of Psalms. So Psalms chapter 89, it's a pretty long one, um, a few verses. We'll read from verse 1 uh, through 18. Psalms chapter 89, from verses 1 through 18. And if uh, someone would help us read it. mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations for I have said mercy shall be built up forever thy faithfulness shall not establish in the very heavens I have made a covenant with my chosen I have sworn unto David my servant thy seed will I establish forever and build up their throne to all generations and the heavens shall praise thy wonders O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregations of thy saints. For who in the heavens can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is gracious to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence of all them that are above about him. Verses 8. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou rulest the rangings of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thy enemies with a strong hand. 11. The heavens are thou. The earth also is thou. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast found in them. Verse 12. The north and the south. Thou hast created them, Saba and Hermon, 
shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty hand, strong in thy hand, and high is thy right hand. 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. 15. Blessed is the people that knows the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Verse 17. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our ones shall be exalted. Verses 18, which is the last verse. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. May the Lord bless his reading in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ma. All right, so we just walked through uh, Psalms 89, verse 1 uh, through 18, and uh, our memory verse is still from the same book. It's Psalm 89, verse 1. So if you're ready, let's recite that together. Psalm 89, verse 1. It says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 89, verse 1. Once again. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With the, my, my, will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 89 verses 1. And this is actually a song, right? I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the Lord. Of the mercies of the Lord, forever I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known. Thy faithfulness to all generations, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just made melody to the Lord in our hearts as we learned a few weeks ago. May the Lord accept our songs of praise and our songs of worship. Amen. All right, so let's come back and talk here now. Okay, Psalm 89, verse 1, and uh, I think this is a psalm um, of the man Ethan. He was, in, uh, he's from, he was from Ezra, and he was saying a few things, a couple of things in those, in those 18 verses that we read uh, in Psalm 89. So verse 1 again says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever with my mouth. This, is, this was Ethan speaking. He says, with my mouth. I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. And guess what? What, is, what Ethan said is still happening today. He said, I will use my mouth to tell all generations about your greatness, about your faithfulness. And guess what? Many generations after, you and I are reading this book. You, are, you and I are reading what Ethan said. So the, what Ethan declared would happen, it literally happened. He, he said, I will sing of the message of the Lord. Forever, with my mouth, will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. And here we are today, reading his words and doing the same. Verse 2 says, For I have said, and this is he's speaking of God, For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to my servant David. Your seed I will establish forever and build up, build up your throne to all the generations. So just a few things there. Um, but Ethan, the man Ethan here, is speaking or he's recounting, you know, God's faithfulness and all the things that God said before they ever happened. You know, things that God said that then created things that made things to be as they, as they were. You know, it, it talked about the fact that God made a covenant with his chosen people, Israel. You know, it, it, made a, it talked about the fact that God said, you know, I have sworn to my servant David that, that your seed I will establish forever. And we know that Jesus is from the lineage of David and is the king forever. 
you know, so he was recounting, saying these things about God, you know, that God said, I will build up my throne for all generations. He says, the heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord, in verse, in verse 5. Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. And he goes on and on and on. You know, he starts talking about how even the raging seas and the, and the, and the, the firmaments and all these things, how they give praise to God, right? And one thing that stuck out of me, and I'd like us to discuss a little bit, is the fact that the man Ethan here is recounting the message of the, God, of the Lord based on his experience, right? Remember we said, the, the lesson title says, it is by his mercies. It's a statement. Or is that a true statement for you? Is that a true statement for me? Do I believe that statement? Can I believe that statement? Right? So the man Ethan, he can believe that statement. Because as he's saying, based on his own life experience and his work with God, he has so many reasons to realize. To say, man, God, it is by your mercies. Right? And uh, for us today... I have not been, you know, like the Apostle Peter and the disciples. I have never been in a ship, you know, on the sea that was being tossed to and fro by the storm. Has anyone ever been in that and God came and rescued you? Have you ever been in that? Okay, I've never seen a raging sea. I've never even been to a beach in my life. <laughs> okay, so some of the things that this guy is talking about based on his experience, right? I haven't seen that. So is there any basis for me to... Be able to say, oh, it is by the message of the Lord. He can say that, right? Because he has experienced it, right? He has seen it. He has known it. But for some of us, when we make such statements, it's like, you know, it just flies past our head, especially for our younger people today, because, like, what are you talking about? Because we haven't seen the same things that this guy is he's saying. But then this is where we now have to look internally and look inwards. So I want to ask, and I'd like some people to share this morning, in your life, and I want if you are able to share specific things, in your life, is there anything that has happened in your walk with God that can make you say that this is a true statement, that it is by his mercies? Is there any experience in your own life that makes that a true statement? Or should we just stop now because that statement is false? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. January 29, 2017, when I fell from that, uh, from the ladder in the, inside this church, you are there and you are, there. Living, <laughs> we are a living witness. <laughs> the way I was coming down, could you ever imagine I was surviving? No, Pastor, I thought you were gone. <laughs> so it is by God's mercy yes. that I'm not poisoned. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. So then let me just amplify what Pastor said for the sake of those who may not have heard. So Pastor said, he even know the date, January 29, 2017. You see, he can never forget the date, right? He knows because God did something great for him. And I'm, I, was a, I was a witness to that. You know, we both, both fell. I'm not sure how. What's the feet here, Pastor? How many feet is this? 13 feet. So about 13 feet. We're both up there trying to fix a speaker. And we fell off the ladder together. And I saw Pastor falling and I, I, I couldn't do anything. And we both fell together, and I fell face down. So I have a testimony to that as well. Because I fell face down on the floor here. And there was nothing on my eye. My nose didn't break. My eye didn't break. My cheekbone didn't break. I'm still here today. Right? And we are still here today. Come on now. It is by his mercies. So we have proof. Amen. We have one proof. Okay, let's keep going. Praise thy Lord. Hallelujah. In 2010, March, we had our Mother's Day celebration. The Monday following it, I dressed gorgeously. I was going to school. I, a bike came. There was one uh, iron protector store just behind my house. The bike dropped. The girl that was walking there, and I boarded the bike. I've not gone about five minutes from my house. I saw the truck, the way he was coming, running. And the truck heated me. I fell from the truck. Everything fell. A young little girl just ran inside and said, Mommy, Mommy, come and see the woman that usually brings something for you. It's on the floor. The woman came out. They carried me. They went and ran to call Andrew. Andrew said, No, 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 it's not my mommy. My mommy, my mommy. my mommy has just left house now. And they took me to the hospital. By the time I opened my eyes, I saw all my co-teachers 
in the hospital, I said, wow, it is by God's mercy. It is by God's mercy. It is by God's mercy Amen. that I was alive. And the owner of the company that the truck, the boy was driving, he said, oh, I'm, I'm sacking the boy. I said, no, it is by God's mercy. Amen. Whether you sack the boy or not, that I'm breathing, I'm talking, it's by God's mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God saved my mother. You know, this is not film trick. I, we knew this happened, right? We also saw in the hospital, right? You know, I freaked out when they came and called me that. This is a few years ago. This is back in Nigeria. You know, we get on, on, on the bikes as means of transportation. And God saved her from death, right? She's still here today. No broken bones, nothing, right? It is by God's mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, in March, there are so many instances, but the most recent that I can remember and that was so very, very impactful was in March must be if i check i will be able to be accurate but i know certainly it was between march 12th and uh, 13th i was at work i worked night and uh, i was on the prayer line with uh, you know two of my people we were praying and uh, usually i put my phone on the speaker it was midnight in fact exactly about five minutes to 12. And then as we were praying, suddenly I felt like I needed to drink. Uh, before they connected me, I wanted to drink tea because, you know, and then my throat went dry. I said, let me take a sip of my tea. As soon as I did, I began to choke. I began to choke midnight. The person that I'm taking care of was already asleep midnight. And it's somebody that needed help. So, but in my confusion, I ran to her room. I was choking. I couldn't talk. I couldn't. And I ran back and then I picked the phone. In between the chokes, I just dialed 91 because I saw that clearly <laughs> something terrible was about to happen. And I dialed 91. And you know, they will be asking you all kinds of questions, but I managed to give them the phone number. They were still talking. Is the door open? I just left it. Meanwhile, the people I was praying with, they were asking, What's wrong? I couldn't answer them. What's going on? I couldn't because I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to, to breathe you know clearly anyway within 10 minutes they arrived mm -hmm. and uh, i was still there battling trying to just i couldn't pray i was just saying the blood of jesus within me and so they came by the time they came you know somehow i was just able to recover slightly they saw me still gasping they said what happened they started taking all the vitals da 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 they said everything is okay What's wrong? What did you do? What were you cleaning? Whilst I wasn't doing anything. I just took a sip of water. And it wasn't as if the water went to a different place, you know? You would know that anyway. So they checked. Everything was fine. Would you like to be checked to the hospital? We have checked everything. You are okay. I said, no, I'm okay now. I don't want to be checked to the hospital. You know, so they left. But clearly I knew that I was, the spirit of death came that night. Mm. It was the spirit of death. And it was so, I've never had to call paramedics in my life. And to imagine that I needed to call them. And they came, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. So I knew that it was the spirit of death. But I want to thank God because I'm alive today Amen. to tell this story. Amen. And the mercies of God actually saw me through. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's one back there. So we're getting proofs now to the statement. It is by his mercies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, in 2012, yeah, October, I went through a surgery operation. And uh, after the operation, everything was okay. Then uh, the third day, because when you do an operation, you are supposed to lie down on your back. 24 hours not turning on your side or left so because i was tired lying down on my back i mistakenly adjust my body mm. then the second day there was a problem the the blood was not flowing again so the blood was just on one side i can't sleep i can't sit down i can't turn so when the doctor came they injected the place they said ah it is blood that they need to take me back into the theater and put a hole in my tummy to draw out the blood. I say again, God, will I not die? 
So I started praying. I started praying. I was praying at the same time I was crying. So the next day when the doctor came, he said, okay, they've already prepared everything to roll me back into the theater to do the, the operation. So he now said, let him try it again. He took an injection and injected the place. And he tried to bring out something. He said, ah, thank God we don't need to go through this operation again that everything has normalized, that the blood is now flowing normally through the veil is not blocked anymore so it was god doing amen. amen amen hallelujah someone put your hand together for jesus put your hands together for the lord amen it is by his mercies and we can go on and on and on and on and everyone here will have multiple examples where we have seen the mercy of god at work Right? So it's not film trick. It's not just another Christian talk. It is by the mercies of God. We have heard several accounts this morning here now of God saving our lives. You know, sustaining us in life. Allowing the breath of life to remain in our bodies. You know, we can also recount for those of us who, you know, who lived a certain way of life before we got saved. We can also tell how his mercy saved us. We were clearly headed to the path of eternal damnation, eternal separation from God. But his mercy saved us. The blood of Jesus rescued us. We can talk about that again all day long. And every single one of us here will have many things to say about that. Amen. So God has rescued us many times. He has saved us many times. He has, he, you know, he has stepped in many times. So we know for a fact it is by his mercies that we are here. We know for a fact, we know with many infallible proofs that it is by his mercies. Amen. So now what should be our response to the fact that our life, our being, you know, it is all based on his mercy? What should be our response to that? How do we respond to the fact that we know now that we are who we are, we are where we are because of his mercy? How do we respond to that? With gratitude, by giving thanks. By praising him always. What else? By loving him. Ha. Ah, worshiping him. Amen. So this really is the essence of our, of our study this morning. And I know there's a lot of other stuff in there. I know you have the outline, so I encourage you to go read it yourself. But what is the, what is the real deal is that we must not fail to recognize that who we are, where we are, how far we've come, it is by the mercies of the Lord. Amen. So let's take that song once again. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known forever thy faithfulness to all generations. Shuns, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. Amen. Now, lastly, as the song that we just uh, sang, as it says, there's one last thing I will share with us. And you know, I've been saying it in, this, in the last few weeks. When we study the word, it is so that we do the word. It is not to gain knowledge and just have information. We have to do the word. So what is the doing in this word for us this morning? It's as the song says, with my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. So that's what is required of you and I today. Now that we have come to realize that we have many infallible proofs that it is by his mercies, you ought to let someone else know about that. You must not be silent about all of God's faithfulness in your life, 
in your family, around you, you ought to testify. You have to share that. Right? When you see someone going through something, you have to use your own experience of God's mercy to support, to strengthen, to encourage. That's how you spread the word of his faithfulness. The man, Ethan, that, that wrote down this word or spoke this word that we read this morning in Psalm 89, I don't even know how many years ago this guy said these words. Right? But the fact that he said this word and it's recorded in scriptures is the reason why we are having this conversation today. He said the words, I will, with my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. And thousands of years later, you and I are still talking about this. So you ought to do the same. Speak of the Lord's faithfulness. Tell people about his mercy. Right? Speak of it. Speak of it. Share your examples on your social media, on your WhatsApp. Don't waste your time talking about things that are irrelevant. Talk about the mercy of God. Let people know how good your God is. Amen. So in conclusion, it is by his mercies. It is not just another Christian talk. It is, a, it is a factual statement. It is a statement that is backed with many proofs. You know, it is, a, it is a core pillar of the Christian life, of the life of the saved. And the way we respond to it is by giving him thanks, by loving him, by worshiping him, by thanking him because of all of his mercies towards us. So let's rise up this morning. And let's just give the Lord a word of thanks, a prayer of thanks, and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies over me, over my family, over my children, over my business, over all that I am involved in, my job, my health. Father, thank you. It is by your mercies. Thank you. It is by your mercies. Thank you. It is by your mercies. It is by your mercies that I am saved. It is by your mercies that I am sustained. Thank you. Thank you for your mercies over this body of Christ. Over this congregation of your people. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your mercies, O oh God. We declare and we acknowledge today that we are nothing without your mercies. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen.